Hi everyone, welcome back to Karen from tillycrafts.co.uk. Um, this is my second video today um, <laughs> due to some technical hitches. Uh, but this is the uh, second card that I did for the Pootler's Block Hop uh, yesterday on Saturday the 6th of June. Um, I've just done another one and I will link the two together, the two different cards. So on the Block Hop I did... <clears throat> I did this one and this one and I've just done a video on this one where I did it in different colours. Um, <laughs> this this is take four by the way. Um, so this was my original card that I did using the uh, World of Goods suite and on my first video that I tried to film I did this one and I just stepped it up a bit by using the embossing folder and then on take three or four, I can't remember, no, take three, I did this and I embossed the whole of the um, the layer, but I don't like it because it's uh, the indentations have gone down quite a lot and I just sponged around the sentiment. Um, but let's get started because I'm going to do it in slightly different colours today. Um, right, so the World of Good Sweet includes a lot of things um i'm just just let me see if i can make this a bit better because it doesn't look like i can get it all on oh well never mind um right so the world of good sweet comprises of this beautiful world stamp set with all these images and sayings so you get a bit of everything you also get the dies and because i like to keep my dies in the stamp case so i use them I've put them in here and these are called the world map dies and you get quite a lot you get these two worlds so you get both sides of the world and they cut out like this you also get a circle which cuts out the stamped image of the world which we've done one of those today already we have the globe stand which I've used this I've also used this where it cuts out slots on the card where I've threaded the ribbon through. Um, there's a feather, the ink pot, we've used those. We've also used the little swirly bit. Um, there is another stand, This whoops, that way up. That's another globe stand and this just embosses words onto your paper. But I've not used those ones today, I've just used these and these two. Right, so also with this suite, you get the ribbon, which is the fox suede ribbon, a quarter of an inch, and it feels so nice. I love that. Um, you get the brass sheets, and you get uh, 12 designer series papers, so you get six each, no, you get two each of each sheet and they're double sided so these are the ones on this side and these are really nice um you've got brass embossing on there uh you've got the map and they're in the different colors i'll just turn them over and again you've got the foil embossing that's the wrong way up that one is absolutely beautiful and it's got um behind it it's got the solar system you've got worlds again and that is lovely and there is one of nearly every country i think on there and you've got that plain one as well and i quite like that plain one they coordinate with three of the new colors which is bumblebee misty moonlight and my brain's gone to sleep which is the other one Oh, and cinnamon cider, that's it. And the other colours in it are Mossy Meadow, Crumb Cake, Early Espresso. And that's those. And you also get this wonderful embossing folder. And it's called Old World Paper. And that, as you can see, is lovely. I'll show you that on the card in a moment. And the, only, the other element we get with it is these antique corners and slider elements, if I can get in it. <clears throat> And I have done a card previous with the corners. They just stick on and it is very effective. Uh, but today we're going to use one of the sliders 
which goes round the book. <coughs> so let's get started. Right, so you're going to need, if I can pick them up without dropping them, you're going to need, I've done this in very vanilla, um, I just like it with this sweet and the early espresso. So it's an A4 sheet of paper, cut in half, scored in half, and then just burnished with a bone folder. It's four and a quarter by five and seven eighths. And then for the inside layer, I've got this new bumblebee. Um, and that is five and five eighths by three and seven quarters. And then the very vanilla layer, which is five and three eighths and three and five eighths. So that's my inside bits. Now for the outside, <clears throat> I've already half done some of these so that we don't have to mess about doing it and you don't have to watch me for so long. So I've used that die to cut those out and then I've threaded a length of the ribbon through and I've only I've gone in the little ones like this. I didn't want you to watch me do it all so I thought I'd just do these up there. So I cut it out first that and then I just embossed up to this edge. Like I said I did try and do it all before and it just smushed it down so you just put it in up to there and then popped it through the machine and that is really effective. I like that. Now I'm a bit undecided as to go for Misty Moonlight or Early Espresso. Um, I like the Early Espresso, but then I don't know if the ribbon gets lost or the blue. I don't know. I think actually I'm going to go for the Early Espresso because I quite like that. So what we can do is stick this down. I'll go through these elements, those other elements in a minute. <clears throat> I'll get me uh, liquid glue. I'll just stick this down. Uh, yeah, like I said on the other video, if you get a chance to go to my website, I'll include the details below the video. Um, uh, but yeah, if you click on my website, there's uh, the Poodles Blog Hop, and it's where we showcase all the new products that, are com that have come in the new catalogue, which went live on the 3rd of June. So I'm just going to stick that down. Right, so, and then if you just turn it over and then I just put a little bit of snail on here just to keep the ribbon down. I'm just going to trim that off a bit. I think I went a bit too mad. Um, if you're cutting your ribbon, I just do it to a little bit either side so you've got enough to fold over on there like that. And then just glue this down. I was thinking about putting it up on dimensionals, but there's enough things on the card that are up on dimensionals at the minute. So I thought we'd do it this way. Then just make sure your card opens the right way because I have been known before to stick it on the wrong side. And upside down. Right. That's lovely. Right. What I will do first before we do the outside is I'll just finish the inside off and I've already got my stamp here I've got the ink somewhere as well there it is um, I'm using early espresso and inside for this one I'm stamping because we're going on the outside with life's a beautiful journey this one says thank you for being part of mine so I'll center that up if it's not straight, I do apologise. Oh, it's not too bad yet because I can't get my head in properly. And then on this one, I just put a little squiggle underneath and one of these curly squiggles down here like that. And then, where's my feather? And then I've got a feather. Um, you can stick, you can just stamp the feather on there, but uh, I ended up with two cut out so waste not want not I think we'll just stick that on there like that and that's that bit done and so just stick this down like I say the the glue I prefer this glue 
the liquid adhesive because it just gives you a chance to move it if you're not quite happy where you put it. Can you see there how I've got a bit of a ridge? That happens when you cut it sometimes, but if you just take your bone folder or a block or anything like that and just go over it, it just smooths it down a bit. That's it. And then we'll just stick this in. Yeah, the reason this is, I've done two separate videos for both cards is I did try to do it all in one and then my phone decided it didn't like me and it recorded it upside down and couldn't rotate it and then my phone packed up and ended up getting deleted, was not happy at all. <laughs> Right, so the elements we need for this are the globe, which I've already cut out. I can't pick these up. The globe stand. That is all stuck. Whoops. My little squiggle. don't think I need to. The ink pot and feather. And this is for the book. We'll do that last. I'm just going to stamp up the greeting for the outside. Try and line it up. <clears throat> it's hard to get my head right over because of the camera, but I think that's not so bad at all. And then what I also did on here, if I can just grab it out, I just trimmed this. This is an inch uh, width, and then you just trim it to where you like it. And I got a sponge, a sponge, can't speak, a sponge dauber and just dipped it in the ink. And then I just went round and I quite like this. I did it on, I didn't do it on my original card, but I did it on one of the others. And I just think it looks quite nice because I didn't um, layer this up with anything like I did on the other card I did where I layered it up. And it just gives that edge a bit of colour. Right. And so that just needs to go on dimensionals. I'll just keep checking to make sure you're all there. Just one of these days I'll get technology bob on. keep meaning to try my take a pick tool because everybody keeps stabbing these and pulling them off and they said it's a lot easier but I don't know whether I like this or not there's a bit of a faff but I'm sure there's a knack to it the only good thing about it it keeps them all together and you can just bin them and hopefully they won't be all over your carpet, bedroom, bathroom, wherever like they are when I've finished. Right, let's bring this back in. So that's just going to go up there in the top corner. That's great. I love that. <clears throat> right, the ink pot and feather want a dimensional one. So that wants one on there. Now because the ink pot's smaller, I'm just going to use one of these edge pieces. It's great to use them. I'm just waiting for... Uh, my new order to come, even that's too big. Right, let's make it a bit smaller. There we go. I didn't realise I'd run out of little ones. Right, so that's those two. Let's do that one first. So you just need to decide where you want it. So I probably want it about there. And there. So uh, let's pop the ink pot down first and I will just put a little bit of glue. Just use this to make sure I don't get it over my paper. That's it. Uh, and that. I don't want to take back off that. Yep. So, I mean, they get stuck to your fingers, so I need to start using that more. Just pop it in there. Oops. Let's pop 
pull that off a bit. Don't need to go over the journey. There we go. That's great. Now to put the glue the squiggles down, I've got this silicone mat, and as you can see, when you've finished with it, the glue just rubs off, which is great, and it stops your work surface getting sticky. So I'm just move them out of the way because that's when I was gluing on my last one but how easy is that that it just peels off and doesn't stick to anything um now normally i'd use fine tip glue but like i said on the other one i must have not put the metal spike back down in the uh in the hole proper and it's ended up um it's ended up seizing up the pipe so i'm just waiting for a new one to come so that I can transfer the glue in. Right, so I'm just going to put my squiggle on there. Like that. And I'm going to do the same thing with my globe stand. So I'll just get it in here. I'm using this to keep it down and it doesn't keep moving all over the place because when I tried to do it with my fingers, it just moved and I don't want it to move. There we go. Now, that needs to go onto the world. Let's move that out for a minute. This is the tricky bit I found. Making sure my world's the right way up. There we go. And then to take the Tombow, put a bit on there. And I also put a dimensional just on the top, just to lift it up. And then I just stuck it on there. Like that. There we go. Mind you, I've just uh, poked a little hole in there, I think. Oh, it just adds to the effect, I think. Right, now to make the book, this is quite easy. I took inch squares, so an inch by an inch, and I've got about 16 of them. So all I did is I laid them all out, put a bit of... Um, snail adhesive on them and just stuck them all together so let me show you what i did so i'll put one on there 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 but not one on the top and then you just stick them on like this and that's your book done and i've used for the, for this one on the last one i used the the map or the plane map so for this one i thought it'd be nice to use this uh, foil embossed paper with the map on and I've actually got Paris on here so I thought I'd give that a go so this is an inch and an eighth um it's this is actually how long is this this is about four inches long but obviously we don't need all that much but it just helps when you're doing the book so just make sure I've got my Paris is going to be my front cover so I'll turn that back round and then right all I did then was I just left a little edge like that so there we are with Paris on Paris is going to go a little bit around the corner and then I just bent it round like that some more tape on there there we go and then just come along with your snips and then you just trim it off in line with that one and that's your book done which is going to go on there next thing is your ribbon so you just measure it out roughly first it doesn't have to meet at the back because it's going to that will be at the back so you won't see it so let's snip that off and then my little slider, wherever he's gone, there he is. So, 
I fold it down. This, again, like I said on the other one, it would be excellent for journaling when you do journaling books. So you can either have it that way or that way. I think I'll have it this way, actually. I quite like that. I'll have it this way this time. So where's the back of my book? That's the front. So this is the back. So I'm just going to put... Actually, I did it with uh, tear and tape. With it being a bit a book, I want to make sure it's stuck properly because it's heavier than all the other elements. So I'll just put that on there for now. Let's tear and tape, pull it off, and then centre that up as to where you want it. And then stick that down. I've got my fingers stuck to it now. And then cross like that. There we go. Now you can just move your belt buckle. Cool. So we've got Paris on here. I think that's quite cute. Right, so like again, like I said, because it's going onto a card and it's quite a thick element, or bulky element, I should say. I'm doing it again. I keep must remember to keep sniffing this because when I tear it, I get in a mess. I know that's hanging off, but we'll fix that in a minute. Right. There we go. Get these off. All right, that one there, you just bend it back onto your paper and then you won't see it. That's one. Two. Three. And then just position it where you want it on the card, like so. And that's our card done. So let me bring in the other cards we did. So <clears throat> that was the one that we started off with. That was the one on my blog hop. Obviously no um, embossing on there. That was my second one I did where I embossed the top bit like we've done today and then on the third one I embossed it all and also put the edge around the thing but I didn't like when I embossed it all because I embossed it and then cut these out and it sort of flattened the embossing so I didn't quite like that so I went back to this one because it's more prominent these were in the cinnamon cider and the misty moonlight and that's today's card in the bumblebee and the early espresso and the inside so thank you very much for joining me. Like I said, I will log them up on YouTube, the two videos I've done with the other cards, with these two cards as well. Um, but thank you very much for joining me and speak to you all again soon. Thank you. Bye bye.